Hey losers, I'm Goral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with the books that I ended up buying in April. Um, it didn't seem like I bought so many until I was like, uh, you know, pulling them out and um, there are a few. No need to dilly dally though. Let's get on with our lives. First book here is something I won in a giveaway. This is um, In the Land of Dead Horses by Bruce McCandless III. This is some sort of like paranormal, horror-y, adventure, history novel. It sounds interesting. It's about, um, when does this take place? I can't remember. It seems like it is in the past, but why do I think that? I don't know. Is there a reason? Maybe I'm just making things up, but um, this is about a uh, ex-Texas Ranger who is trying to uncover the re or the manifestation not so much a reincarnation but a manifestation of an ancient mayan god sounds like it's going to be fun also tress in the emerald sea by tress of the emerald sea by brandon sanderson don't know what this is about but i am going to read it next month so check that out when i get to it i had two books in my nightworms package this month you're not crazy i didn't do an unboxing i kept it for weeks and i was like next time i film i'll make sure to do this and then it's like uh the end of the month so i just fucking opened the package and inside of it was such pretty flowers by kl sarah this is about a woman whose brother um, dies by suicide. She's trying to get to the bottom of it because it's a little bit suspicious to her. And she ends up kind of somehow getting involved with his uh, girlfriend and flowers and shit. I don't know. I don't know. Never heard of it. Never fucking heard of it. Uh, but also, Lone Women by Victor Laval, which is a book that I'm really excited to get to eventually. I'm hoping maybe not next month, but the month after. This is about a woman who is uh, in the, what would they call it? What era do they call this? I don't know, um, but it's 1915 and like it's the time in our country where there was lots of people um, immigrating to the US and they were buying plots of land, um, you know, in the, f it's like the Dust Bowl era, you know what I mean? Um, so this woman, Adelaide, Adelaide, Adeline, Adelaide, Adelaide, um, is traveling by herself and she has this huge steamer trunk and the synopsis says Adelaide Henry carries an enormous steamer trunk with her wherever she goes It's locked at all times because when the trunk opens people around Adelaide start to disappear uh, Then what else the secret she's tried so desperately to lock away might be the only thing that will help her survive the harsh territory what more do you need to know? Um, it sounds absolutely fantastic and spooky and weird and I just fucking love it. Then I finally bought a copy of Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw, which is about a girl named Jade Daniels who is obsessed with slasher movies. So she is just the fucking expert on it. The first person to pick up on it when a slasher killer uh, stops in her little idahoan town i really need to read um reread my heart as a chainsaw before i get to this one but i will do it i will do that maybe also in june oh my god is the month the month after this month is june already the month after this next month i don't like that i also picked up a copy finally of the crimson labyrinth by yusuke uh, Yusuke Kishi, which is a book I just, it's probably been like 10 years I've been looking for a used copy of this book, uh, and it, like it just hasn't happened, right? So I just had a fucking weird like tickle about it and hunted down a copy on eBay finally. So this is about, um, what, he is a math major, a former math major, and he wakes up and he is in the middle of this labyrinth and with him is a woman. They have this strange device and it like is leading them through this labyrinth with like um, a game and it's like they can choose different things and they, uh, I don't know, it just, it sounds weird. It says, if you're a fan of Lost or Battle Royale, don't miss this one. I'm a fan of both those things, so I'm trying not to miss it. I won't miss it. I mean, like, I have it now, so 
I just really need to start prioritizing like the books I'm most excited about reading. Oh boy. What a weird life the life of a book collector is because like why do I have some books that I'm just like not super like dying to read? Why is that? I don't know. But this is one of them. This is what I'm dying to read. Why do I feel obligated to pick up certain books for like no reason other than like I bought them because I was excited about them. I am purging some books. I have been in the process of doing that but it is a strange thing. I don't think many people would understand it but I know you guys do so I don't know. Anyway I also picked up a copy of The Reluctant Immortals by or just Reluctant Immortals by Gwendolyn Keist. This is about um, Lucy from Dracula and Mr. Rochester's wife from Jane Eyre. And um, instead of just being like pushed off into the freezer by the respective men in their lives, um, in this book they are together in Los Angeles in 1976. And uh, they've been, it seems like they've been hiding away at some point. Um, they're undead and Mr. Rochester and Dracula return to their lives and like what's the deal with that? I don't know. Um, it sounds really interesting and kind of groovy. I have to listen to lots of psychedelic rock when I listen to the, when I read that one. Next on my list is Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. This, oh boy, is a new release and this one just sounds right up my fucking alley. This is about a woman whose son has died. She keeps a piece of his lung and starts to nurture it and eventually it grows into something that starts to look like her son. Um, but no matter how hard they try to nurture it and, and teach it how to be a human, it's just like not. And um, it sounds like a great exploration of grief and horror, which is something I really, really, really love. Um, one of my favorite, favorite, um, I guess, could it be a trope? I don't know. Um, one of my favorite things to see in horror though. So I'm, I was so psyched to see this at uh, Barnes and Noble. And I also picked up a copy of Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Snyder. All I've got to say is that this is blurbed by Christopher Golden, but it's not, it's not just that it, this has been blurbed by Christopher Golden. It's that the blurb says, a hideously gory, kink-fueled, feminist, cosmic horror, apocalypse novel. Okay, the cosmic horror thing, not always my jam, mostly not my jam, but like all those other things in there, that's what I love. That's what I want to hear. Um, that's what I want to be about, you know? So um, something about the apocalypse. There are these three women that we're following. They're each different and the apocalypse affects them differently and seems like it might kind of transform people into not necessarily like different forms but maybe um a pure version of themselves or a person a version of themselves that fits them I don't know what am I trying to say I don't know I haven't read it so anyway I also found a good copy of V by AC Crispin which is a book that I didn't realize was based I thought that maybe the um, TV series was based on this book and not the other way around. So kind of interesting, but this is um, an alien invasion novel. It says that tens of thousands of extraterrestrial beings and a huge spaceship the size of a modern metropolis arrive, right? And then they trick the humans into thinking that they're peaceful, but they're not. And yeah, Alien Invasion. I actually was listening to something the other, it was just last night. Um, and I, then I was like, oh no, I had to stop. It was like 11 and I was up. I was the only person up in my house. And I was like, I had to stop listening to this because I'm gonna get too scared and have alien dreams. And luckily I did not. So that's good. But um, aliens really, really scare me. Um, also picked up Volume 10 of Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. It may just be my favorite graphic novel series of all fucking time. This is kind of like a sci-fi fantasy strange as shit novel where we're following a couple who have defected from their respective militaries. They are part of two warring planets. It's like, I think like a planet and its moon, right? That are like 
warring against each other and the governments will stop at nothing to kill them so they're like on the run and it's just a great book full of great characters and it's so sad at some points and so hilarious and i love it and then finally i picked up a copy of lakewood by megan giddings this is actually something i can't remember if i just listened to an audiobook of it but I feel like, no, I feel like I maybe had an arc of it. Anyways, it's a book that I read and didn't have a copy of. So here it is. This was such a trip. Um, it's kind of like a fever dream. You're really not sure if what is happening, or if the main character's version of things is really what's happening. Uh, this is about a young woman named Lena who signs up to do these like scientific tests um like medical testing on herself because she really needs the money something like that i can't god now i feel dumb because i don't remember everything that happened in this book but this was a, a good read and i really wanted i've been trying to find a copy of it finally did finally found a used copy of it so i snatched it up because i like to you know um, talk about things and it's easier for me to talk about them if I have a copy of it and then it's like um, it has a physical representation and it doesn't just get lost in my brain so here it is worth a read if you haven't picked it up so those are the books that I bought this month of course as always I would love to know if you ended up reading any of these if, if uh, you have any opinions on them um, I'd love to know if there's anything good you bought yourself this month, but that's it from me today. Thank you always so much for watching everyone. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I will see you later. Goodbye.